Hello, welcome to Church and Talk. I'm Kyle Shirley. Our guests are Mrs. Smith and Olivia Featherstone. Thanks for coming in today. Sure. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, uh, Olivia, we're going to start with you. I understand you're on the speech team. Yes, I am. I uh, I do do speech. Yes. How long have you been on the speech team? I have been on it since my sophomore year, so that makes three years thus far. Uh, what events do you compete in? I compete in impromptu and currently oratorical declamation, but I used to compete in radio as well. All right. Could you explain to us uh, what those are? Uh, so in impromptu, you go into a round and you're given a prompt. It's uh, usually a choice between three. You pick that prompt and you have two minutes to write down an outline for a speech. Um, and then you get up and give that same speech for six minutes. So typically we try to have that memorized. And then uh, oratorical declamation is basically giving somebody else's speech as if it were your own. So somebody would be reciting the Gettysburg Address, for example. All right. Uh, how do you think being on speech team has helped you in other classes? Um, definitely being an impromptu has really helped me in English classes. Uh, writing impromptu essays in English class are basically, I, I write the same outline as I do for a speech, and I usually get pretty good grades on those, so I like that a lot. But it also has helped me with presenting. It makes me feel more comfortable with being up in front of a crowd and speaking. What do you think would surprise people most about speech team? I think what people would be most surprised by is that even though it seems like we work super hard on so many different things, like we're actually very flexible. Um, so even if you had like if you do like a bajillion other things, we're usually pretty good at working around your schedule, and it's actually really fun. You only have to come for like two hours a week for whatever event you do. All right, thank you, uh, Mrs. Smith. You are the one of the chief editors for the yearbook, correct? Well, I'm the advisor. advisor. I call myself the advisor. The advi okay. Yes, because the students actually are the editors in chief, oh. and they're the editors, and they kind of run the show. I'm just there to advise and guide. So the students are the ones who kind of create the yearbook, right? Yes, the students do everything. They do the layouts, they decide what content goes into the book, they decide on pictures, um, they do everything. How, how many students would you say are in yearbook staff? Well, I've had in the past two classes full, so 60. This year was a little bit smaller. I have about 22 kids on staff. Last year it was about 25, so it kind of varies. It's nice. I think my ideal number is anywhere from 25 to 30. Having the two sections was a little rough, but more the merrier too, you know. Um, it's also a lot less work when there's more kids, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what sort of skills do you teach the students? Um, it's very journalistic in nature. So we talk about writing. Um, a lot of it is feature writing, how to write a good feature piece, um, storytelling uh, with words and description. Uh, we teach the students how to interview in depth. Um, photography, because we want the students out taking pictures. So we do like basic uh, composition of photos, how to make the photos more interesting. Uh, we do design, uh, because the students are designing the, each page as we go. So it's actually a big mix of a lot of different things. Um, a lot of computer skills, they actually design online. Um, so they get experience with you know designing software, which is um, very nice if you're interested in going into something like that. Yeah, it sounds quite practical. What do you think would surprise someone to learn about yearbook? Um, well, students can I, I, students can um, submit photos on a program called replayit.com. Um, so anybody in the building can send photos in, and then our staff accesses them and puts them in the book. And I don't think students utilize that as much as they could. You know, I mean, it's your chance to make sure that you and your friends are in the book. Um, so send us pictures um, through replayit.com. All right. Uh, how has your book changed over the years? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, obviously, the technology has become much more advanced. Um, we, um, when we first started out, um, we only had like four computers. Um, and a lot of it was done by hand, and we were actually like um, the digital photos. Like you actually had to do like dark room and develop photos. Now everything's digital, obviously, um, and we have the online program. Um, when I first started doing uh, yearbook, we used a program called PageMaker. 
Um, and then uh, we graduated to InDesign, and then now we do the online program. Um, and every year, there's new cool things you can do um, with color, with touching up photos, um, with graphics. Um, so that keeps getting um, you know more and more exciting. Uh, what are senior ads, and how can someone buy one? Senior ads are an opportunity for parents or teachers or even friends to recognize a graduating senior in the book. So they buy space in the book, they send whatever photos they want to be printed, and they can write a message, a goodwill message, um, and uh, it's just a little space for you know their senior. Um, in the past, I've had coaches, you know, um, send in uh, well wishes for their team, thanking the team for a great season. Um, parents are probably our biggest audience, uh, where they're, you know, talking about how proud they are of their son or daughter and wishing them well, and then having like baby pictures and all the way up to it's it's very it's a very great opportunity to um, have a personalized space. Um, do something nice, obviously, for your graduating senior, or even if you wanted to, again, guarantee your friend group is in the book, you could send in, you could buy an ad, like a group of friends could buy an ad, and you guys could have a whole space. Um, so it's kind of open to anybody. Um, they can order ads um, online. Um, the, uh, the flyer is actually on our website. So if you go on the DGN website, you go under clubs and organizations under yearbook, you'll see the senior ad form. Basically, they can make, they, they, um, it's all online. So you go in and you can design the ad yourself too. So you upload the pictures that you need and then you put the message in and then it goes in our book. All right, wonderful. Well, now we're gonna move on to our game. It's called Higher Lower. The way it works is I'm going to give you some cards that on the front side say higher and on the back say lower. I'm going to give you some statistics. The first two are about speech, then the last two are about yearbook, and you're going to guess either higher or lower than the amount I give you. All right, first up, we have speech. What percentage of people suffer from speech anxiety? Is it higher or lower than 75%? Wrong. The answer is 74%. Oh. Lower. Oh. That was good. <laughs> that was really I'm close. I'm the question. <laughs> in 2000, Bill Clinton delivered the longest State of the Union address in U.S. history. Was it higher or lower than one hour and 15 minutes? I'm going to go higher. Correct. It was one hour, 28 minutes, and 49 seconds. Now some yearbook trivia. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, the most reliable source, how many books were published in the U.S. in 2013? Is it higher or lower than 350,000? Wrong, the answer is lower, 304,912. How many independent bookstores are there in the U.S. in 2016? Is it higher or lower than 1,500? And our winner is Olivia Featherstone. The answer is 1,660. All right, thank, thank you both for coming in. It's a fun time. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Trojan Talk. Look for more episodes on our YouTube page.